friends, Lori here. I'm back to do the second half of my June reading wrap up. I actually had a really good reading month in June, mostly just because I was devouring things. I didn't have to grade anymore. So it was really, really fun. Um, my bookish game did not go as according to plan in June and I'm going to rework it for July and you guys will see that in my July TBR whenever that's posted just because I'm not going to give myself any rewards or punishments just because I didn't really follow my own rules and I think it was a little bit confusing for myself so I think I'm going to edit the rules and we'll talk about that in my next video but well, let's get into it. I changed my angle a little bit just so you guys could see more of my books um, but I did wind up reading 14 things in the second half of the month and let's get into it um so the first book that i finished reading was last chance books by kelsey rodkey here's a picture i think i might got her last name wrong or her super fun it was set in a bookstore and you basically follow these two people that work at competing bookstores one is a local indian one is a big box store and they have basically a pranking roar that sort of goes to task and rivals lead to more than rivals it was a fun read i don't think it was my favorite but the one thing i did like about this book is it sort of challenged like expectations like what you want to do with your life doesn't always go that way so it was set like after high school um, there was a lot of representation about, like, di diverse family setups. The romance I liked, I don't think it was my favorite, as I will say with the next book that I tackled. But it was fun. I would definitely read more. I always have a soft spot for books set in bookstores or have to do with books and reading just because that's something I thoroughly enjoy. Obviously, we're here talking about books. But I liked it. I don't think it was my favorite bookstore book, but it was enjoyable, and I gave it three stars for review. The next book we're going to talk about is... Not Our Summer by Cassie Bozzi. Here is a photo. This was also an e arc that I got from NetGalley a couple of months back, but I finally got around to reading it. Overall, I liked this book a lot. I struggled a little bit with, like, the romance plotline, but overall, I thought it was a solid read. We'll definitely read more by this author in the future, but you basically follow these two characters, so it's a dual point of view novel. They're cousins, and their moms have had a blow-up so many years in the past but when their grandpa dies he has a lot of money he left them an inheritance but the only way they're going to get the inheritance is if they're forced to do tasks together to work together um and that's the only way that they can get the money and they're in two very very different life situations but they're forced to work together i love the cousin dynamic in this story i love these girls sort of seeing each other as humans and sort of being forced to work together i like that the one thing I struggled with was the romance in this book. It wasn't believable for either romance, really, and I struggled with that a little bit. There was also a lot of, like, representation with smoking, and I just didn't feel that comfortable with that because I don't think that should be put on a page, especially if you're get, putting this, it should be in the hand of teach students. So I struggled with that a little bit. But it was a fun read, really fast. I read it in like a day. I like the travel elements. I like the force to work together. I wasn't the biggest fan of any of the romances in the story, but the cousin elements definitely won out. And I really liked the focus on cousin relationships because that, that has not, I haven't read about that a lot, but I come from a super big family. I know all about cousin dynamics. So I like that Cassie really focus on that and I wound up giving this three stars and I would definitely read more by this author in the book that I tackled was actually an audiobook that I picked up um but that is Unlocked um Keeper of the Lost City so the first half of this book is basically like a guide um to all the world building leading up to this part which I thought was really informative and then the last half of this book was a novella that basically le leads us to the last half of the series I really like this thought it was great um, this is exactly the type of book I always wanted from the Harry Potter book, like an encyclopedia. We never got it. I thought Shannon Messenger did a really good job. I also really did like the novella. I think that this was sort of the plot point in this series that I was waiting for, like when the when the spark was lit. And I'm really excited to see whenever the next book comes out what happens because there was something done in this novella that had never happened before in this series and it really changed the game. I wound up giving the first half of the book, I would say, four stars, and then a novella, like, 4.5 stars. So, overall, it was, like, a four-star read. Definitely would recommend, if you are reading The Keeper of the Lost City series, definitely read this whole book. 
Um, I grabbed the audiobook. People in the background were having work done on our house, and I had so few hours that we actually have internet. So if you hear noise in the background, I do apologize. Sorry. Um, but then the next book that I picked up was another eARC. I had a day, at, like a couple of days at work, where we literally had no internet. I know my internet has not been working anywhere I've been. Um, so I wound up picking up Namesake by Adrian Young. I really like that one. Gave that one four stars, and here are the pretty photos. Fable, um, and it was, I, I think I like this one a little. The first half of the book I struggled a little bit with because we weren't with the characters that we met in Fable, and it was a little bit of like a different environment. But the second half of the book, when everyone was back together, was enjoyable. It was like such a sea-fearing adventure. This book is not really fantastical. It's more like piratey theme. There is a fantastical element that could have been explored, but it wasn't. But I love Fable as a character. I like the romance. I love the ragtag bunch of heroes. That's definitely one of my favorite tropes where they're forced to work together. And I really liked it. We wound up giving it four stars. I definitely like this duology a lot. I struggled with her first series a little bit. I didn't like Sky in the Deep as much as the series. And I'm really excited for her next book that's coming out. So I wound up giving this one four stars. And I read this duology all this year, which is great. So definitely excited for her newest book that's coming out, I think early next year maybe the end of this year but definitely a good read and perfect for summer it was a very very like watery themed novel and the romance was very very fun as well the next book that I'm going to chat about is Treasons of Thorns by Laura A. Waymount I did have a physical copy of this but I gave it to my friend so here's a photo the Laura A. Waymount's second book I did read by Light Between Worlds enjoyed it but this book I loved I really like this book but you basically follow this girl named V, I think her name is. Again, it's been a bit since I read this, so I apologize if I don't know her name. But basically, every this is set in historical, you know, historical times in England, and basically these mad these houses need a caretaker because these these houses are very very magical. Um, and if you don't have a caretaker, the magic in the house can basically kind of go out and kind of destroy the land. Um, so this young girl, her dad was basically committed of treason and basically sent to live in this house and stay there until he died. And then she, she always thought she was going to become a caretaker. Um, but when she goes back to, tr to try to protect this house, some things come to light that she was not expecting. It's a standalone. I like that. I really enjoyed this book because it had like a blast from the past romance. It was very eerie, very, very creepy. I thought it was a really engaging read, a really unique read. I don't think I've ever really read a book like this before. No one has really talked about it, to be honest. I haven't heard anyone other than me read it, but it's really eerie and creepy. It had like vibes of like House of Salt and Sorrow. Um, but I, it, it, it also had like Anastasia vibes. I really enjoyed it. When I'm giving it five stars, it was one of my five star prediction reads and totally lived up to the hype. And she has a new book coming out soon, which I really hope to get my hands on shortly. But when I'm giving it five stars, and this is definitely like a hidden gem. I wasn't the, I liked Light Between Worlds, but this one was a little bit more up my alley. And it would be great for Halloween or even the summer because it's very, very fast paced, very, very engaging, and also a standalone. So hard to find standalones in the YA universe. Um, but I really liked it and went up giving it five stars. And it did fit my prediction, which is great. That I picked up was On the Way to the Wedding, which is the last official Bridgerton book. There's like companion novels and uh, anthology. But this is Gregory's book. And I am shocked at how much I really like this book. story and Gregory starts out this book convinced that he is going to marry Hermione but things don't go according to plan when he gets involved with Lucy and all hell breaks loose and it was a delight fast-paced adventure I think this epilogue the second epilogue was probably my favorite in the whole series I love Lucy as a character I think I relate the most to Lucy out of all the characters in, in the Bridgerton verse I like that we got to see more of the Bridgerton family in this story not as many characters as I wanted but we got to see a lot more of them and it was a lo I just loved it I thought it was very very action-packed very very adventure especially towards the end and I just like being in Gregory's head and again Lucy became a fan favorite to me so definitely a really strong read five stars and such a solid end to that series and now I just have to wait until Netflix makes all the series but I really did like this series quite a bit I picked up was 
Sweet Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This was an Owl Crate read, also a five-star prediction read for me. I really like this book again. I gave it five stars. It has been so long since I read like a witch novel, but you basically follow these two characters, you follow Tasman and Ren, and Tasman is a witch who has been exiled because she engaged in dark magic in the past, and then you follow Ren, who is a source, which means she can't do magic, but she is sort of magic. Um, and their paths cross when a when a, when 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 a magical plague kind of sweeps through the world, and they're forced to work together to save the world, but also to save Ren's dad. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple of other things that pop up. Like basically, the only way that um, Tasman will help Ren is if she gives her the love of her father, because she can't love anymore. That was part of her punishment. I love this book. This is an LGBTQ um, story. I just fell for this. It reminded me so much of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The magic system was great. It also focused so much on female characters, which it reminded me a lot of the um, the Three Dark Crown series. It was super engaging, super fast paced. I really enjoyed it. Um, this I think is also a standalone, which again, I really, really liked. Um, I just like both characters a lot. And it was great, a delight. I really love this pick quite a bit. And this also fulfilled my top five star read production. I had a really good month with that because I read three five star read productions and they were all five star reads for me. So really successful with that. But this one was an owl cry pick as well and I really liked it and hope you will consider checking it out. Definitely a good Halloween read, but really a good read all, all year round. Um, and then the next book that I wound up reading was We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And this is her newest book for the YA set. Um, this is another kind of like lighter hearted contemporary, but you basically follow Quinn and, Ter and um, Tarek. Their families work in the wedding planning business and their paths keep crossing. Um, and things are a little bit awkward because a year ago Quinn expressed her feelings to Tarek and things did not go according to plan, but as they're kind of forced to work together over their summer, things kind of unravel. I like this book. I don't think I liked it as much as I liked Today, Tonight, Tomorrow. There's a lot of stuff about Jewish heritage and Jewish culture, which I really appreciated. Um, there was also a lot about, you know, your own path, finding your own path in life and not letting your parents paths fulfill yours there was a lot of miscommunication in this trope in a lot of different ways i know that sometimes frustrates people a little bit but i did like it and i would definitely read more by this author in the future i want to check out her adult read her past books but still did like it i just think i preferred today tonight tomorrow a little bit more but i did like the blast from the past romance that is definitely a trope that i really love in all sorts of books so that was definitely a highlight and i love the wedding planning story i just love books with a fun concept i've always have and this was no different um and then the next book that i wound up reading by audio was a chorus rises by bethany c morrow this is the seat the companion book to a song below water i wanted to adore this book i like the second half of this book a lot more i just really struggled with naima as a main character and i think that's because earlier this month i wound up dnfing white fox which is another story that had a really unlikable character i'll talk about white fox in a little bit but this one she really was unlikable and i picked up the audiobook just because i felt like i would get through it a little bit more and i really did not like naima throughout the whole book i like all the side characters i like the world building i like the mystery element that sort of came in at the end and the plot point that connected this book to a song below water but as an email as a character, she was not my favorite, and I struggled really hard with this book. But it was enjoyable to read. I liked the urban setting. I liked the world building. I just struggled with her as a main character quite a bit. So I only wound up giving this one three stars for review because of that. But that's just more of a me problem because I struggle with unlikable characters. You may not. But I did like the end of this book a little bit more than the first half. DNF this month was The White Fox by Sarah Faring. Again, I just struggled with the characters in that book. It was like a mystery, like her mom had gone missing and her and her sister kind of had to work together to find her mom. I got like 25% in and I just was not feeling the main characters and I 
think because I had just come off of reading A Chorus Rises and this character was really unlikable, I just struggled and I wound up DNFing it. I still do have 10th Girl on my TBR and I might try to pick that up in the fall, but I just was not the biggest fan of that book and unfortunately did not finish it. And that rarely happens, but people ask me to talk about my DNF, so I'm talking about it. That's why I wound up DNFing it, but you guys might like it. I just struggled with the unlikable main character a lot. Um, and then the next book that I am going to chat about is a nonfiction read that's taken me about three months to read, and that is How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates. This is just really interesting and very, very informative. It just basically talks about climate change in 2020 and also during the pandemic. I really liked it. I thought it was really interesting. I definitely think I learned a lot from this book. It was also interesting just like to learn about climate change, but also what you can do as a person, but also how you can force your elected representatives to do more. So I don't give, I don't really write nonfiction, but I think it was definitely a factor breed. Um, I felt like it was really easy to get to through and it wasn't as complicated. I would write a chapter every couple of days, but yeah, I did wind up liking this one and would definitely recommend it if you are looking to learn more about climate change. Um, and then the next book that I wound up reading was These Feathered Flames by Alex o Alexander Overy. Here's a photo. wound up liking I wound up giving it four stars I sometimes struggled a little bit with the pacing in this book but you basically follow two characters one character is going to be queen and the other twin is a firebird which is basically like sort of like someone that sort of protects the kingdom but their paths wind up crossing when their mother dies unexpectedly and that sort of leads them to sort of uncover the mystery of that but a lot of other things happen in this story. There is romance on multiple sides, and I overall really enjoyed this story. I thought there was a few pacing issues, but I thought the world building was really interesting. I love the falcon myth or the firebird myth. I thought that was fascinating. I'm really excited to read book two. I just struggled a little bit with the pacing in the middle and the end, but other than that, it was a really, really strong read, and I will definitely read the sequel to this book for sure. Um, and then the next book that I'm going to chat about is a graphic novel, and that is Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alex Osman. This is the second book in the Heartstopper series. I like this book quite a bit. I wound up giving it five stars for review. Um, this one really fo focused a lot on, um, I think it's Nick. Nick, he kind of untangles his romance with Charlie a little bit more, and you sort of see him kind of coming into his own definitely want to get book three and four in this series next time I head out I'll probably pick it up but I like this one and it did go for the pride bingo board which I failed in reading any books for this month I read so few I think I read three books which was not a success but that was one that I read um and then the next book that I just finished reading yesterday was Olivia and the Mass Duke and here's a photo of that one of a readathon with Peace Love Books as Hope is hosting. This was the group book, but it also fulfilled quite a few challenges. But this is sort of like a Regency mystery romance also, but it's also like an age gap romance. You basically follow Olivia and she has long been in love with the man that saved her when she was a little kid. She's now 18 and he's like 30, so it is a pretty big age gap. But it did grow on me as the story went on. I will say Benedict's past was really interesting. I like that, but his romance style, like his aggressiveness and his possessiveness did not do it for me. That's not the type of hero I like, but I really did love Olivia as the main character. She was basically pretty much a wallflower, um, and I love wallflower romances. I liked it. It wasn't, the their romance was really, really fun, but the book wasn't, the romance type wasn't my favorite. But I wound up giving it three stars for review, and I would definitely read more by Grace Calloway in the future. And the last official thing that I finished in the month of June was Whispers of Bone by L.T. Ryan. Here's a photo. Second book in the Cassidy Quinn cozy mystery supernatural. I don't really know how to classify this series, but I really am liking it. Um, but this follows Cassidy. I keep on wanting to call her Cassie. Cassidy, but it's Cassie. I, so many books starts with C names. Um, but basically follows her as she kind of develops another serial killer case and she's kind of in the means of solving it. But this one also deals heavily with the relationship with her sister and also a, a case from Cassie's past 
makes a reappearance and I'm really intrigued to see where it goes. The romance was not at all featured in this book, which is a little bit disheartening, but I think the book was definitely focused on her relationship with her sister, and I'm really excited to tackle more books in the series once Audible gets it. I listened to this one, and I really like that listening experience quite a bit. Very, very short listen. I listened to it in, like, less than a few days. Um, very, very enjoyable. But, yeah, those are all the things I wrapped up reading in the month of June. Highlight reads for me would definitely be Rule of Wolves, Sweet Bitter Magic, um, Heartstopper Volume 2, um, yeah, I actually had a pretty good reading month, but I'm going to go do my July TBR, and I will talk to you guys then. Let me know in the comments what were some of your highlight reads, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, friends.